You're listening to the Things You Don't Hear in Church podcast, a show where your hosts, Darian and Ethan, discuss the controversial topics often avoided by the church. They also discuss culture, society, and everyday goofs. And now, Darian and Ethan. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. The Things You Don't Hear in Church podcast. Yep. We're back with another week. Yep. And this week, we're going to be talking to you about humanity. Is it evil? Is it good mm-hmm. by nature? What does the Bible say? Yep. What do we think? Yep. Hopefully we agree with the Bible, but yeah, yeah it's going to be a right? fun episode. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's such a controversial topic within Christianity right now because most of progressive Christianity believes that humans are um, good by nature, mm-hmm. and most of Reformed or even traditional Christianity thinks that they're evil by nature. Um, right. And I'd say that's that's a pretty fair estimate. Um, a lot, I'm not a lot, all of the progressive Christians that I've talked to have and I've asked this question to, which is not a lot, like maybe five people, um, have said it's a good amount of it's yeah, a good yeah. pool to draw facts yeah. from. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't ask that question to everybody. So, <laughs> um, have all said yes that humans um, are good by nature. But I think even before we get into all of this good and evil, all that kind of stuff, we kind of got to define nature um, and kind of define like good and evil and human nature and what kind of nature we have, if that makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. So we can define nature a little bit. What do you think when you think of like nature? Like I don't have the, the dictionary definition, but like think human, of human nature. Um, yeah, so human nature would just be the innate qualities that humanity possesses yeah, yeah, yeah. that would s- m- differentiate us from everything else. Yeah, the thing right? that like makes us who we are, yeah. right? And the like nature of us. Qualify- maybe qualifying factors of humanity. Mm-hmm. And as, if we're talking about nature, I would say qualifying factors, not necessarily physical although i guess you could but like Sometimes. more um instinctual sure depends what you define as, as yeah. physical but yeah that makes sense yeah yeah i'd say there's a lot of like biblical things that were created with um i would say the first non-biblical thing that we can kind of perceive that's in our nature that people say all the time they talk about this one is what makes us human which is our ability to reason and most scientists will say the thing that differentiates us between animals, depending on your definition of animals, um, is that we have reason, we have logic, right? So mm-hmm. reason is part of our nature, as well as like a lot of other things. Like the Bible says, we're the temple of God, we're yeah. created in God's image, right? Yeah. So no matter what, a human being is created in the image of God, whether or not they have a sin nature or a redeemed nature, right? So mm-hmm. like there at the beginning, we have some, some things that are good, like that are positive, based off of our, our nature. Um, we're beautifully designed, right? Um, Heard that. <laughs> <laughs> we have evil tendencies as well, mm-hmm. right? Like you don't have to teach a kid how to like, uh, how to lie or to steal or to take something right, from someone, right. right? You have to teach them why it's bad, mm-hmm, more or less. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the um, ability to have knowledge, yeah. um, especially the knowledge of morality and of God, no matter who you are. I was just gonna I say that. I said God really Midwesternly there. <laughs> Of God. Of God. <laughs> it's okay, man. Come over. We'll accept you. Shout out Peyton <laughs> and, um, uh, and Hannah. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, that idea that the fact that humanity has the ability to conceive a God, mm-hmm. well, I guess, the, and that would be probably because a God exists, but the fact that we're able to recognize that and then mm-hmm. have faith, that is innately human. You don't see, like, animals yeah. having faith. Uh, yeah, okay. In God, maybe. Well, they wouldn't, they don't have that. I would like, I don't know. You don't really see animals like, like they don't have a knowledge of like, oh, I have to worship this God. They just live their yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It just depends on your definition of faith. Because we give the example all the time of like, um, you trusting a chair to sit on is having faith that that chair will support you based off of the evidence right. you've accumulated by sitting on that chair before. Okay. And so an animal could kind of have the same thing where they like, they kill an animal and they eat it and they know it's going to be good for them and nourish them because they've done it before. So they have faith. If they do it again, it's going to yield the same result. I wonder if animals do have that thought process like, oh, I've done this before. I know it's going to work. Or if they're just like doing things because it's like they're mm-hmm. programmed that way. Like I know there's some aspect where animals do have Probably some awareness instinctual. of self. But the idea of animals and awareness of self has always been mm-hmm. interesting to me. Yeah. Because there's studies out there that say cows have best friends. And they get separation anxiety if you take them away. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of animals will mate for life. And so there's obviously some amount of um, emotions there. That's so crazy. But most of it's probably instinctual, for sure. Yeah. But for human beings, a lot of stuff is, is instinctual as well. Like yeah. a lot of, like the love emotions are very instinctual. 
um, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So sorry, I'm yawning a lot. It's it's not, all right. It's not early in the day. So maybe let's get into a little more of like the good nature versus the evil nature and what natures like human beings have now that we mm-hmm. kind of define what nature is a little bit yeah. more, and then we can kind of walk through the kind of the biblical landscape of the truth. <laughs> yeah, the truth <laughs> of like what what natures we had, if it changed, when it changed, if it did. Um, what it looks like now, that yeah. kind of stuff. Is there anything you want to say in accordance to all that? It's an awkward time to give me that mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's yawning again. What yawning if instead like, of having mics in the podcast, we just had a mic and we would passed it back and forth? That might be fun. Be pretty we fun. could try it. We could try it. We yeah. could just take like yours or whatnot and put it in the middle and swing it back and forth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be more funny it. if we handed it to each other, though. <laughs> Or like, oh, it'd be even more funny. You could want to talk like, no, no, no. It'd be even more funny if we like taped it to someone's hand so only they could have it and they had to hold <laughs> it for that person the whole time. <laughs> I was like, but can I go down? No, no, no this is your do. work duty. <laughs> Why? That'd be pretty funny. Um, okay, so like, basically, the idea of do does humanity have a good mm-hmm. nature or bad nature in and of themselves? stems from this idea of like basically are humans good right yeah because if that if humans are good then that i think it, how you answer this question depend like shapes in a way how you view your life or how you walk yeah. out your life how you shape your world view mm-hmm. so it's important to ask if yep. if humans are good well then we can have pretty good confidence in humanity as a whole to get things together eventually and figure it out and mm-hmm. a little bit more faith in humanity than i would say is realistic but if humans are bad then it's like, okay, well, we're just never going to figure this out right. and whatnot. And so there, it does. it's important how you answer that question. And It would kind of be like your view on the future of humanity would change right. based off of just the merits of, of, Christi- oh, not Christianity, of humanity. Right. Like if you had the view that humans are good by nature or mostly good, um, then you would have the view that world peace could be achieved that we're headed in like this kind of a direction as humanity, yeah. right? Like we're, we haven't always been the same. We're getting better than we are now. Um, like stuff yeah. like that, if that makes sense. But if you had like a negative view of humanity, you would say, or that, that humans have an evil nature or are evil more than they're good. Evil nature, that they'd be on like a downward trajectory, right? Right. Um, not headed towards like world peace, but continually headed to continually destructing or self-destructing or hurting each other. Right. And from a humanistic standpoint, right? Like this would influence the non-Christian to say, okay, humans are good innately. Then I can work towards like trusting humanity and doing things and just being encouraging and helpful mm-hmm. and like, yeah, being patient with the problems, but we'll get it eventually. Whereas even if you're a humanistic um, type believing person, which is just basically saying humans are ultimate, then the flip side would be that if you think humans are bad, then you'd probably be like, okay, we got to either, we got to control people because they don't know how to control themselves. They're mm-hmm. going to be bad. We have to put things in and, and all this stuff of like, you guys are all going to mess it up. So we got to find a select few people to maybe like steward you guys. And then you'd be like, oh, but those guys are going to mess it up mm-hmm. too. And, and it's just like, if you don't have a God to have hope in and you believe that God, that humanity is evil, it's kind of like a hopeless mindset. Yeah, right. absolutely. So you don't want to really believe it. It's not no. fun. Yeah. Because yeah. you can say, like, oh, we need to put people in charge, but they're still people. I mean, so humans like, no. to survive, they need to have hope, right? And so if you don't believe in God, you need to have some other kind of hope. And if you believe that humans are evil and there's no God, then there's no hope also. Because humans are going downward trajectory and there's no ultimate power to save them from anything, right? Right, right. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I hate how much I'm yawning. That's embarrassing. It's okay, I can slap you really fast. It won't help. It will okay. just make me have painful yawns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I think, can we get into yeah, let's a go. biblical analogy a little bit? Let's um, definitely get into it. So at the very beginning, everybody knows, or most everybody knows, the verse um, in Genesis, Genesis 1, 31, where God says, um, and it was very good, right? So Yeah, he created humanity, and it was yeah, very good. Yeah, in the previous uh, verses, he's talking about creation. It was good. He says that the animals were good, that the land was good, right? All these different things are good. And then for humans, he says it was very good, right? And later on talking about their nature and like who they are and their desires and stuff like that Mm -hmm. he's talking about it in a very like positive good light his creation is good so man has um a good nature right man wasn't created with an evil intent or with evil in him god can't create evil or with evil intent um god created a completely good being right with free will um and eventually we chose to sin and so i would say people who more progressive christians that believe 
um, humans are mostly good um, would also agree with this. Like humans fell and then they would differ on what that means for us now, right? So what do you think that means for us? Like we were completely good and then we sinned, chose outside of God's perfect plan Mm -hmm. um, and are now tainted by sin, right? And so now um, like uh, there's a verse in Genesis, I forget where it is. I think it's Genesis 3 where it's talking about uh, Adam and he had a son named Seth and the Bible says that instead of Seth being made um, in God's image just the verbiage of course mm-hmm. he's still made in God's image but it, instead of quoting that saying Seth was made in God's image it says and then Seth was made in Adam's image mm-hmm. right and so the image of Adam being the fallen man yeah I think it was a little bit later um, it's definitely in there because Seth was like it says like something like an exact rep- like, mm-hmm. like it was like they were basically just like very similar I'm pretty sure but, it's three or five. Well, well, Seth was after Abel died. Mm-hmm. And so there's the fall. That happens pretty fast. Yeah. So there's the fall in three, maybe four. I mean, I can look it up. I got my Bible out right now. It doesn't here. matter. It's a minor point. Well, now I'm just curious about it. <laughs> okay. Cain and Abel, four. Um, yep. At the very end, Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called him Seth. In for four. she said, Yeah, v- uh, chapter four. This is verse 25. And God has, uh, or God has appointed me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he calls his name Enosh, and that at that time people began to call upon the name of the Lord. So yeah, um, somewhere else then it says that he was the exact, or maybe it says that about Cain. Five, probably. Yeah. It's in there. I promise you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can go look it up. Yeah. So what do you think that means for the human nature, right? Can we make the assumption that humans now are evil by nature or good by nature based off of that fall? How does right. the fall impact So that's us? like super interesting, right? Because even like... Are you ready to get into Romans? Yeah. You have that Romans verse ready? Or No. Okay, I was going to go off. Because that's like interesting, right? Because there's this dichotomy where, in one sense, you, we have fallen from God's plan of how we create, or got, uh, original intent for humanity. Mm-hmm. So we're bad. So we're evil. Mm-hmm. But by the same token, we're still, humanity was still created by God. Mm-hmm. And there's some part of us that, that knows that, I yeah. would say. I believe that, at least. And so that's why I think... And, all in all, overall, humanity, in my opinion, is evil by nature. Mm-hmm. But there's some part of us that's able to recognize a God. Okay. And you see that with different religions. You see that with the fact that there are religions means that there's some part of us that recognizes a God exists. Right. Right. And that we need we need some sort of retribution. Right. And the, and even the fact that you're that someone knows like what's wrong. That oh I sent or I, I stole something that's negative that has a right. negative that shows that there's some inclination towards good there's some pull towards good right um, but R- Romans says it says none is righteous no not one this is Romans three mm-hmm. no one understands no one seeks God all have turned aside together they have become worthless no one does good not even one their throat is an open grave they use their tongues to deceive the venom of asps is in their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. And their paths are ruin and misery. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Hmm. Um, Pretty strong language. Yeah. And so that's talking about right before that. He says, what then? Are Jews any better off? Not at all. For we have all charged that both Jews and Greeks are under sin. Mm -hmm. And so basically that's just saying sin has infected the whole world. Right? Mm -hmm. So because sin has infected the whole world, there's none righteous. Righteous means the right standing with God. Mm -hmm. So... Jesus is righteous before God because he's never sinned mm. and he's God. Yeah. But humanity in ourselves can never be righteous before God because mm. we sin and, and all of us want to sin. Yeah. And what's really interesting, I was just reading this, it says like, it, as you, it's Romans 3, mm-hmm. um, 10 through 18, if you want to go there. As it goes, it's progressively getting worse and worse, progressively getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And it's like feet is, uh, it's like their mouth is full of curses. They're quick to shed blood. Their paths are ruined and misery, mm-hmm. all this. And it ends with saying there's no fear of God before their eyes. Hmm. And I would say that kind of points towards why we have this problem of humanity being evil and what keeps humanity in evil is the lack of fear of the Lord, hmm. right? Yeah. As Adam and Eve rebelled against God and did things their way and ate the fruit that they were told not to, there were, they lacked in a fear of God. They rejected the fear of the Lord because mm-hmm. they said, we're going to do it our way. Yeah. Right. And so because they weren't listening to the fear of the Lord, they fell into the sin and that sin has infected all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Right. So now all of us have this idea where we don't have the fear of the Lord. And that's not, you don't have to look far to see that. Yeah. Only like every other verse in the Old Testament. Yeah. And look at your life. Like 
you do things that you know are wrong and mm -hmm. maybe you don't feel bad about it. You don't have a fear of the Lord. I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like I cut people off in traffic sometimes and I'm like, whatever, I don't care, I gotta go. And it's like, no, that wasn't loving, Ethan. Mm -hmm. That's the aspect of where I need to grow in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. One of the main verses I think of when I think um, of if we have a sin nature or if we um, are evil more than we are good is John 8, 44, classic verse. <laughs> it says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to cry out for your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. So like... It goes on after that to describe more of the devil's character and stuff yeah. like that. But even the language from the beginning of we, were, we used to be made in the image of God and God was our father. Mm -hmm. And then now we're of our father, the devil. And it describes the devil's characteristics and his qualities and stuff like that, yeah. naming his attributes. Um, yeah. So I think it seems to me pretty clear that we may now have a sin nature, right? Mm -hmm. Even all of the things we're going to talk about in a second when it gets into us having a new nature, how can we have a new nature if we didn't have an old nature that needed to be gotten rid of, right? That was yeah. bad. Yeah. So how, why would God want to get rid of a good nature that we had before if then when we become Christians, we get a new nature? Right, that's good. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So it would, it would make a lot more sense if we have a sinful nature, like it seems like these verses are saying, mm -hmm. and then we need a new nature, which is why Christ yeah. comes and what it yeah. talks about in the New Testament. And there's a, even just to add more scripture to back up this point that humanity is evil by nature, mm -hmm. meaning like, unless there's an intervention from God, you are left to be evil. Now, all the Calvinists are clapping their hands. <laughs> we love you guys. I want, I'm gonna address that again because I don't necessarily believe in, um, what's that called, the, the tulip thing? Um, where God chooses who he wants. The to tulip see. thing? You know, tulip, total depravity. Oh yeah, I but, thought you wanted me to explain uh, all of it. No, 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 there's like that one aspect where it says like, the part of Calvinism says God like sovereignly elects those who yeah. he wants. That's not what I'm saying I'm getting at by saying there has to be an intervention from God for us to have salvation. I will get to that. I'll explain that in a second. Um, okay. But I'm going to read Ephesians 2, 1 through 9 real quick. And it says, As you were dead in the trespasses and sins which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like mm -hmm. the rest of mankind. Yep. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, mm -hmm. by grace you have been saved, and mm -hmm. raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Hmm. So, um, yeah, it says we're all sons of disobedience, children of wrath, yeah. as the rest of mankind. Yep. In my opinion, that's a pretty solid argument to yeah. say that uh, humanity is evil by nature. And the intervention I want to talk about from God to humanity is, in my opinion, not God sovereignly choosing to elect some people salvation and some people not by his own decision. I okay. think that could be per because in first P or second Peter, it says it's God's will that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Right? So if it's God's will that all repent, then that has to mean that it, it, he offers it to everybody. Yeah. He wants repentance for everybody. Yeah. Right. And so the intervention in my understanding of the Bible is that God has, Put some, by being created by God as humanity, we have something inside of us that recognizes that God exists and we need to follow him. Mm -hmm. That innate recognition, I would say, be comfortable saying, is God's intervention. Mm -hmm. And more than that, on this side of the cross, um, of the new covenant where Jesus has come and, and we believe in him, mm -hmm. the bio, uh, John in, in the book of John, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Mm -hmm. Right? And so because he sent the Holy Spirit into the world to convict mm -hmm. the world the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and Romans says that everyone knows that God exists so that no one's with excuse, everyone's without excuse. Mm -hmm. If the if everyone's without excuse and the Holy Spirit has come to convict the whole world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, that is God's intervention, intervening for humanity to be able to recognize their need for a Savior. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that God sovereignly elects people, but I am saying that unless God... If God never did that, we would all be hopeless. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, this isn't really the topic we're talking right. about. So it's I, kind just, of I got a caveat. Answer. I wanted to just uh, I know there's clarify. things I want to say about it. I don't have the <laughs> verses on the top of my head um, just because I wasn't thinking about it. Um, I wouldn't say I hold the same view. I think all those verses are talking about um, a presupposed grace that happens for the sinner, like in the imagery that it gives in that passage where it says that we were drowning or we were already dead. Um, I think that everybody is dead in their trespasses and that they need everybody, even if not saved, needs an amount of grace even to be able to try to accept Christ's gift. And mm -hmm. so we almost need help to even be able to hear the knock or even answer the door right. um, or so. take Christ's hand, or right? And so I think that's what those verses are talking about. But well, I would say that wouldn't, I would say I was saying the same thing. Yeah, but we can move on to yeah. something That else. was just a big tangent just to clarify my previous statement so there's no theological misunderstanding. Okay, yeah. Um, so moving on, we, I think it's pretty obvious, we have a sin nature, hopefully. I'd love to have a debate with someone hopefully who, we have who, a sin nature that who, we said. who disagrees. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, because if we don't, then we're screwed. <laughs> or if we didn't, then we're screwed. Um, hopefully we didn't. Um, yeah, so moving on, the logical next step is talking about the new nature that we have right. and kind of getting into the details of that. Do we still have the sin nature as part of us mm. or like when we're saved with Christ? Um, do we have a new nature now? But then yeah. why do I still struggle with sin and like the old right. nature? Is it the old nature or is it the flesh? What's the difference between those things? Are they the same thing maybe? It'd be good to talk about, I think. Um, we can start off in 2 Corinthians five seventeen, classic yeah. verse, where it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he has a new creation. The old is past, and behold, the new has come. Right? So pretty self-explanatory. We have a new creation, or we yeah. are a new creation, yep. right? In Christ, we're absolutely new, wiped clean. It's it's the language here um, is almost talking like on a biological level. Like it's not even it's not even talking about just the the covering Christ has, right, or the substitutional atonement that Christ has for us. It's talking about who we are by our nature, even biologically. Like mm. who we are now is different from who we were before, um, because Christ has uh, paid the price. He changed us physically, but also atoned for our sins. So it's physically he changed us, or you mean spiritually? Spiritually, yeah. Yeah, he changed us, um, depending on your view of physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even like Galatians, Paul says, um, talking about how like they're sons of God now mm -hmm. and heirs, and he says, and because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, "Abba, Father." Mm -hmm. And Abba does not mean Daddy. I don't care how you want to say that. People say Daddy God. And Abba is, and they try to use Abba for it. Mm -hmm. Abba does not mean daddy. It's a, di it's different hermeneutics, mm -hmm. which means a study of words, different yeah. topic. Um, but the idea that the new nature inside of us as Christians is calling out to God for mm -hmm. help, right? And now, so that the problem is then it's like, okay, well, I have this new nature that's supposedly calling out to God and I'm a new creation, but I mean, I still want to do all these sinful things. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? How do I justify that? Yeah. Um, there's a great verse, um, actually a couple of verses before the 17, the Corinthians 17 verse, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 4, that says, For while we were still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, right, the new, the new um, creation that we have, but that we would be further clothed, mm. so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Yeah. Right. So talking about the process of sanctification and we can talk about the different steps of sanctification, uh, maybe get into a little bit of um, deep theology on the three different kinds of sanctification and mm. all that kind of stuff, fun mm. things. But it's obvious and apparent that we have a new nature now, yeah. but that we're not perfect yet. Right. And even like this verse says, we groan for more of that nature. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah. I was just going to back up that point even more with something that Paul said in Romans 7. Mm -hmm. He says... For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. Mm -hmm. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know mm -hmm. that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Mm -hmm. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do, not what I not want or... But the evil I do not want is what I keep doing. Mm. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin who dwell, which dwells in me. Yeah. That's a kind of confusing a lot. verse with a lot of do's and do not and want yeah. and not that don't do. And, but anyways, basically what he's getting at is saying, I have this desire to do good, 
but I keep doing bad and mm-hmm. I don't want to do this bad but the bad I do is showing that I that there's a law that is being broken yeah but I don't want to do it I don't want to break the law but I keep breaking the law yeah, it's and the sin in me that right does it, yeah. and he's like the reason I'm breaking the law is because the sin in me yeah you know which and isn't it, an excuse for saying I'm not doing it like in myself he's just saying part yeah. of me is still this old man or this flesh or this uh old nature right and so he says for i know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh yeah so the problem the thing is though as a human you have a fleshly nature and a spiritual nature and then mm-hmm. that's basically it some people say there's like mind soul spirit i don't know what the soul is it's weird but you definitely debatable have, yeah, yeah a lot. You Very definitely debatable. have at least a flesh and a spirit. Yeah. And so your flesh is still given to the tendencies of the world mm-hmm. while your spirit is filled with the spirit of God now mm-hmm. and it calls out Abba Father. And that's why we need the grace of God to fill our spirits up so we can carry out the stuff that he wants us mm-hmm. to. You know, and just um, going off even more, there's another verse in Philippians 7 that's coming to mind that basically says everything is, is, uh, is because of God. And so I'm just going to keep talking as a filibuster until I find this. If you have any thoughts you want. Yeah. I mean, on the question of is the flesh and the old nature the same thing, I would say probably the same thing. Um, It's pretty debatable. I've heard some good arguments on both sides. Um, I I know a few of the pastors that I've talked to about this have said um, they don't think they're the same and they think that um, the old nature is dead and that now we deal with the flesh. Um, which is just like our mortal bodies longing for sin, right? Um, but at the same time, you could just say our mortal body still um, has part of the sin nature on it. And we've sort of, like this verse is saying, put on the clothes of a new nature, the thing we long for more, right? Mm-hmm. Just as our ourselves in spirit wears this body as sort of clothes, we put on more clothes over it of... Uh, or even taking those old clothes off and put new clothes on of the new nature. Um, but we still long for those things sometimes because we're still um, human and on this earth. Right. So sort of, it's it's interesting. Um, I don't think it's super important. I just think it's fun to talk about different yeah. words. Yeah. And so that verse I was getting out of the Philippians, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but also much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm-hmm. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Yeah. And so what that's saying is it's God in you who's giving you the desire to do good works and then giving you the ability to carry out those good works. Yeah. So you and yourself can't carry out the good works because there's a sin nature. But God has sent us a spirit that calls out to him mm-hmm. and provides the ability to, to carry out those good works. Yeah. So nice. That's my thoughts. Yeah. Um, talking about sanctification a little, or before we do that even, adding on to your point, we defined what the sin nature was and like what our like kind of nature has in its uh, fullness at the beginning of the episode, right? Yeah. So now if we're talking about what the new nature has, right? Um, the new nature has the mind of Christ. Right? I don't have the biblical references for these, but uh-huh. the Bible says we now have the mind of Christ. Right? Um, we are a new creation. We now have his desires. Mm-hmm. Right? Or we can long for his desires. And we also have spiritual gifts yeah. right? that we now have because of our new creations. So there's a few other things as well, but there's a lot of things that we gain by becoming new creations. So now that we know that like a little bit of the definitions of what our old or what our new nature is like, and we still have an old uh, flesh nature, whatever you want to call it. We can talk about sanctification, right? Because sanctification is the logical next step. If we're struggling between these two things, the old nature um, and the new nature, or the flesh and the new nature, sanctification is now what's happening to us here on this earth, right? Yeah. It's the longing, the groaning that that Second Corinthians verse is talking about, right? That's what mm-hmm. sanctification is. It's a desire to move more towards um, the new self than the old self, right? Yeah. The yeah. new nature than the the flesh, the dead, uh, the dead dog, right? So, there's three different kinds of sanctification in um, in like classic. Uh, theology. Why can't I think of the name right now? Classic. Systematic theology. Systematic Sorry, theology. I was trying to think of that for like five minutes. <laughs> so no, it's like the most basic thing. Um, in systematic theology, there's three kinds of sanctification, right? Um, there's the beginning one, which we have different names for actually. The first one, beginning one, is justification, which mm-hmm. is technically still sanctification. And justification is a good way to think of it is like just as if I had never sinned, 
right? Mm -hmm. You're justified before God, right? You're made in right standing with him and who mm -hmm. he is. So you're justified by God, if that makes sense. Yeah. So justification is the first level of sanctification. The second level of sanctification or the second kind of sanctification is just called sanctification, right? <laughs> um, so the first one would be like positional sanctification. And the second one is we're moving um, towards more of who God has called us to be, right? Yeah. It's more of a moving sanctification where we're headed in a direction. We're not all the way there yet. It's not a perfection in sanctification, but we're headed towards looking more like Christ, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the second kind. The third kind is called glorification, right? Come on. And that's when we enter heaven, we have glorified bodies. The sanctification process is completed and it's the end of the sanctification, right? So the right. beginning is justification. When we start, we're justified before God. The middle is we're moving towards that glorification and the end, the third kind of, of sanctification is we're completely glorified. We got it. We're um, there. We're there. Yeah, by who we're God has created us to I be. Can't right? Wait for that glorified body. So those are the three kinds of sanctification, sort of the whole process of what sanctification is yeah. and what we're hoping for. And that's what we have here on earth now are those processes of sanctification. If you're a Christian, you've been justified, and now you're in that transitional period of sanctification, the second kind of sanctification yeah. in, in which you're moving to be more like Christ. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like if like someone brought if you got if you bought a a car from a junkyard mm -hmm. and it's bad and then you're like okay well this is gonna be good you kind of like have justified you redeemed it yeah and so you're good you bought it back but then you're in the process of fixing it up that'd be like the mm -hmm. sanctification and then once it's completely fixed and ready to go and able to be driven again and beautiful and there's no problems that is kind of like the the glorification which is another funny thing because like we God doesn't look at I mean I don't think that God looks at us as like damaged goods he doesn't look at yeah. us as damaged goods right now he looks at you as he looks at jesus because the bible says we're in christ mm. so he's not he knows about your flaws he created you he knows their sin has infected you and messed you up and he knows what's wrong with you but he doesn't yeah. like he's not calling that as your identity right, right? So, as christ being fully human he sees us right um, represented by christ by the human race right and so god sees us Christians as he sees Jesus and that's why he's mm -hmm. able to dwell with us and be with us yeah right while simultaneously being able to clean us out yeah you know and so sanctification is a super important part of the Christian life that yeah. in my opinion doesn't get as much attention as it should yeah you know a lot of people are like talk about justification and they talk about the new body and they talk about like you're justified like be free do this, which yeah. is all true and good but there's not a lot of like talk about sanctification which mm -hmm. needs to be heavily emphasized because yeah Sanctification is the right now, the how are you daily transforming mm -hmm. to look like Christ. Yep. Basically yeah. all of the New Testament is about sanctification. Yeah. And from the moment you get saved to the moment you die, you're in sanctification. Yeah. So you might you, you should probably know about it or yeah. and participate probably, in it. Probably, yeah. I mean, the Bible is, is a book that guides us <laughs> how to live this life, being sanctified yeah. towards who Christ is. And on, on the previous uh, statement that I made about Christ being fully human, he's also fully God. Just yeah. so everybody <laughs> yeah. doesn't get There's the wrong a, idea. Lately, that's been a hot topic too. Like the yeah, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, that's a yeah, yeah. The hypostatic union. It's a fun one. Hypostatic union. Drop yep. that on your friends. Get them all. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you probably don't even know what the hypostatic union is. Bro, how do you justify the hypostatic union with the Euthyphro dilemma <laughs> in your systematic theology? They're like, what? Wow, you're dumb. What did you just? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you using those big words, dude? You trying to sound smart? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I memorized them. Think I'm I smart. I don't know what they mean, but they you don't either. So you're going <laughs> to challenge me? As long as you don't challenge me, you'll think I'm really smart. <laughs> don't ask it. me what they mean. Think it till you make it. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know what they mean. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll do some shows one day about them. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's about all I have to say yeah. on this topic. Obviously, I, I hope, I think obviously, humans were created very good. And then we fell. And now we're very not good. Now we're very no bueno. Very yeah. no bueno. Very no bueno. And Muy no bueno. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now God created us or a new nature, right? When Christ died, we accept his um, His atonement and he changes us mm -hmm. inside, gives us a new tent. Um, we now have a new creation. We tent is like a, a body. New creation. Yeah. Just we are looking. a new creation. No, dude, you didn't get your tent when you got saved? You guys got a tent? Dude, I got a tent. <laughs> is there like... <laughs> dude, my tent has a hammock in it and everything. It's really great. Um... We all got our new tents except for I Ethan. I missed that memo. We're going to have to check on his salvation I should, later. Yeah, I should check out my application again. Maybe <laughs> it's so pending. It's pending. You know, COVID, there's a lot of applications. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, uh, 
So we backed up in there. That's um, so funny. <laughs> but anyways, we have, we're not new creations, and God is continually sanctifying us as we move towards looking more like him, right? So it's a process where God is sanctifying us as we work towards, so like we're holding hands with God, moving towards looking more like him, yeah. doing it together. It's both on his part and on our part to be sanctified. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ ultimately is the one who sanctifies us completely at the end in glorification. Wow. Can't wow. wait until that happens. Right? And apparently y'all got tense, so yeah, I'm going to be... Emailing maybe Kevin. check the mail. Maybe it got lost or something. I moved to Hawaii. Well, sense, maybe yeah. my tent's back home. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm gonna check your that. Michigan PO box. It might be there. <laughs> hey mom, did my heavenly tent show up? <laughs> Is there happen to be a, a tent? What do you mean? You I threw it know. out. Mom, mom, I need that. <laughs> my tent from God. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That's awesome. But yeah, guys. So just continue in sanctification. Mm-hmm. Love God. Love people. You're doing a great job. Hopefully. Yep. Probably. Hopefully. We, yeah. We don't actually like. Know that for a fact. I want to encourage you to say you're doing a great job, but hey, if you're you might not be. Yeah. <laughs> if your heart's gotta be honest with yourself. Yeah, we just go. Let's be real. Sometimes we're not. Yeah. Doing great. Um, so if your heart is in a position of repentance towards God and you're having a humility to be teachable and learn how to be a better Christian and be more like God, you're doing great. Yep. You know? And it, and the results will come. So be encouraged. Uh, just keep pursuing God. Keep looking after Him. Yep. Or looking up to Him as He looks after you. And so we'll leave you with that. Be yep. blessed. We're we on love all you guys. Social medias. We We're everywhere. Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. On Spotify, yep. hit that support button. Yep. Yep. Go follow us. Listen to us. And we have some big news coming soon. We're probably going to make um, a short episode video podcast kind of thing about it. You yeah. can listen to. It'll be a couple minutes. We'll talk about the future of the podcast, what's going to look like, um, what our futures are kind of going to look like, and things like that coming soon. Yes. Maybe this week. Maybe not. We'll see. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, yes. guys. See ya. Adios.